Is your estrogen normal? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford, a board certified OBGYN and fertility doctor. And today I wanna to talk about one of my favorite hormones, which is estrogen. I know that there is so much confusion out there about what your estrogen levels should be or shouldn't be. And this is even by other doctors or healthcare providers. So today I wanna to give you a little bit of a primer on your estrogen and help you know if it's normal and what does it mean if it's high or low and what are those symptoms. Before we dive in, thank you for being here. Would love it if you would subscribe or consider sticking around, following, sharing, commenting, just helping this channel grow as we work to spread more information about your health, your body, your fertility, your hormones to more people so that you can be a better advocate for your own health. All right, well, estrogen is made mainly from the ovaries. So when we like to think about the female body, the vast majority of your estrogen is actually made from the ovaries. You may be surprised to learn that your body actually has three different types of estrogen that are made. This is called E1, E2, and E3. So E1 is estrone, and this is made from the fat cells. E2 is estradiol, and this is made from the ovary. This is most of the estrogen that you have. And E3 is called estriol, and this is actually made from the placenta. So this is a special pregnancy-only estrogen. Well, when you are in your reproductive years, most of your estrogen is coming from the ovary. And you have to remember that unless you're on hormone contraception, or you're pregnant, or you're breastfeeding, because these are different times, if you're having regular cycles, you should be having a constantly varying estrogen level. So the way that I like to think about it is to think about all of those eggs that are inside the vault inside your ovary. We know that at the start of the month, a group of eggs comes out of that vault and each egg is inside a fluid filled structure called a follicle. And these follicles are all nice and small. Now the brain will send out follicle stimulating hormone or FSH, which is well named to get a follicle to grow. And as that follicle starts growing, the egg inside starts maturing and that mature egg and follicle really start pumping out the majority of the estradiol that you have in your body. Now, just to get a good reference, each tiny little egg or each little follicle when they're not growing still does make some estrogen. So I like to think about this as it can make one picogram of estrogen. Now, when your body starts having a follicle get towards maturity, a mature egg is going to make about 200 picograms of estrogen. So if you have 20 little follicles outside the vault, your baseline or your lowest estrogen level might be around 20. It's not gonna be zero, it should be around 20. And then as you get that egg growing, as it gets closer to ovulation, that estrogen is gonna rise and it's gonna get closer to about 200. When it's at that high level, that's going to tell the brain, hey, we have a mature egg, and now this mature egg is ready to ovulate. The brain will send out a surge of LH, and LH will get that follicle to rupture, the egg to come out, and then that follicle will reform and will start making progesterone. When you're not pregnant, that follicle reformed and made the corpus luteum will die, progesterone will drop, you'll get a period, and estrogen will drop as well. Corpus luteum makes both. And then you go back to having a low level. So we can kind of imagine having a baseline level of estrogen. It's then gonna raise as you get close to ovulation, peak, stay kind of high, and then drop when that corpus luteum leaves. Your symptoms from estrogen are going to vary throughout the course of a normal menstrual cycle. And you probably would recognize some of this even if you're not aware of it. You'll actually notice some of these estrogen changes. Now, estrogen, the female body loves estrogen. So in your follicular phase, which is estrogen dominant, meaning all estrogen, no progesterone, you're going to have increased concentration, energy, libido. You're gonna have more cervical mucus as that estrogen peaks, more breast tenderness and fullness. And so you're going to kind of feel better and sexier. As that estrogen level is low, you're gonna to start to feel mood changes. You're gonna to start to feel a little brain foggy. You're gonna have lower libido, feel more depressed, can even have some vaginal dryness, discomfort, difficulty sleeping. And this is kind of normal, that's more associated with PMS as we might know it. Now, those symptoms within a normal cycle are totally fine. And if you're having regular predictable periods without intervention, your hormones are likely very close 
to balanced. Meaning having a regular predictable period is one of the best signs that your brain and ovary are communicating. There's nuance there about when are you ovulating in context of that. And that's why cycle tracking can really help you understand your luteal phase. But when we talk about having high or low estrogen, we are really talking about living at these levels longer. So low estrogen people might be more common with your chronic low estrogen symptoms are going to happen when you're just not ovulating at all. You have very sporadic ovulation, ovarian failure, which is menopause, when you have extreme stress causing that lack of ovulation, or if your ovaries have been removed. These symptoms are pretty profound if your body doesn't have any estrogen and it's hot flashes, night sweats, difficulty concentrating, brain fog, vaginal dryness, low libido, depression. You'll even be at risk for other serious consequences like osteoporosis, Alzheimer's disease, and heart disease. So having chronic low estrogen is not good if you are premenopausal in age range. And this is why it's not good to not have a period for a substantial portion of the time if you're not on hormonal contraception. Hormones that give you no period are different because they're replacing some of your hormones. But if you just are really stressed and not having a period, that's not good and that can be very detrimental to your health. One of the things that I find women really struggle with having low estrogen is in the perimenopausal transition. And so this is when you're not fully in menopause. Menopause is the absence of periods for 12 months and ovarian failure. When you haven't entered menopause, but your periods are starting to really spread out and you're having many more low estrogen days. Think about it, your periods are every two to four months and you're having this very long low estrogen time before you'll ovulate and kick it into gear. Now from there, this is when getting on some hormone replacement and the perimenopausal time can really, really be beneficial. In perimenopause, when your periods start really spacing out, what can happen is that you're not ovulating, but every two to four months, and you have many more low estrogen days before you kick in to ovulate. And this can be when being on hormone replacement or some estrogen can really, really improve some of those symptoms. So if you're getting older, if your periods are spacing out, please don't just chalk that up to something you have to deal with and that there's nothing you can do. High estrogen, on the other hand, has gotten a lot of attention, and this is sometimes called estrogen dominance. Now remember, half your cycle is naturally estrogen dominant. The follicular phase, when you're growing a follicle, is naturally estrogen dominant. But what we're more worried about is when your estrogen might persistently stay high. And there are times when this can happen. Example, one of the most common are gonna be PCOS and obesity. Now their mechanisms are different. So in obesity, you're gonna have more fat cells and more of that E1, that estrone being made, but this is causing you to have too much estrogen. In PCOS, when you have more eggs inside the vault and therefore more coming out every month, your baseline estrogen is elevated. So if you have 50 eggs coming out of the vault, your baseline estrogen is gonna be 50, not 20. And that can cause some chronically high estrogen problems, which can in turn also cause problems ovulating and some other issues. But we also see elevated estrogen, which is problematic from things like heavy alcohol use, liver failure, ovarian tumors, having toxins or certain supplements. So not everything that's out in the world is benign, right? Toxins and supplements can 100% be natural. Those high estrogen symptoms are sometimes similar. So you can still have fatigue and headaches and difficulty sleeping, but you're going to notice some more of the hormonal stuff. So you might get some hormonal acne. You are going to get some breast enlargement often. You might get some of those, you know, mood changes, but notice that you're just not ever having that like crisp peak estrogen, like high attentiveness. And you also might start noticing some increase in your central weight gain. So that abdominal weight gain and your insulin resistance, cause that can kind of go along. Part of the estrogen metabolism pathway actually comes from the gut microbiome. So remember, that's why the liver's important, the gut's important. And so you control a lot about how your body is actually metabolizing some of this stuff. So if your periods are regular, predictable, that's overall a really good sign. Tracking your cycles can give you some insightful information if you're not feeling like yourself. But if your periods are not, and if you're having any of these hormonal symptoms of high or low estrogen, this does not mean you necessarily need estrogen or need progesterone. 
What you need is to get to the root cause. So please be wary of somebody who's not telling you what's causing the problem and just ultimately asking you to buy a supplement, especially if it's one that they themselves happen to sell. That can be a red flag in this hormone circumstance. Ultimately, hope this helped you understand your estrogen a little bit better. Please ask any of your estrogen questions below. I'm here to help you understand your hormones more. As always, thank you so much. Please consider subscribing and sharing this episode. You can always get more information on the As Woman podcast, or you can follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford ND for more information. Thank you, friends.